I'll be showing Copilot Vision on Windows. Copilot Vision allows you to share any window with Copilot, and then Copilot can see your screen and you can interact just with your voice. In the second half of this video, I'll even show a tutoring scenario with math in my favorite app, OneNote. So let's get started. I'm here in Windows, and the first thing I'll do is launch the Consumer Copilot app. And I'm going to click this icon right here on the taskbar. Quick note, if you don't see the Copilot app on your taskbar, just open up the Microsoft Store app, search for Copilot, download it, and then just pin it to your taskbar. This brings up Consumer Copilot, and you're going to see these little glasses here. And when I click this, it says Share Screen with Copilot, and I'm going to choose to share my Edge browser. So I'll click Share here. Hey, Mike, good to chat with you. What's on your mind today? Hey, can you see the Edge browser I have here? And what do you see on this web page? Yep, I can see it. You're on Mike Fulfson's YouTube channel in the Microsoft Edge browser. The channel is focused on how-to videos for Microsoft product features. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hey, guess what? I'm actually Mike Tholfson. I made this channel. That's awesome, Mike. Your channel is a great resource for Microsoft product Oh, tips. you're glazing me up. Okay, guess what? I'm going to go now and I'm going to share a different window with you. So hang tight. I'm going to share my OneNote window. So hold on. Okay, that was the Edge browser. And you can see it actually kept track of my entire conversation in the chat here. So there's the whole transcript. Also, depending on where you are in the world, you might not have access to Copilot Vision yet. I'll have a bunch of information in the description on where you can find it and how you can get access. Now, I'm gonna click on the share icon again. And this time, I'm gonna share OneNote. So I will click share right here for my OneNote that's open. Okay, hey Copilot, now I'm looking at OneNote. What do you see on the page? You're working on a page titled TPS Report Research in OneNote. The content, discusses the IEE 829 oh, test. So Copilot, do you know what a TPS report is and where that comes from? Absolutely. A TPS report is a mock term from the movie Office Space. The iconic scene features an employee being hassled by multiple bosses about a TPS oh, report. Oh yeah, now hey, Copilot, do you know who that boss is, the famous boss? I reference that boss a lot in my YouTube videos. I bet you're talking about Bill Lumberg from the- Bill Lumberg! Yep, that is him. Now, Copilot, can you see what is the toolbar that I'm on right now and what are these choices across the top? I've never heard of this class notebook before. You're on the class notebook toolbar in Microsoft OneNote. It's geared towards educators and students, allowing teachers to create and manage class notebooks. The choices across the top include options to create class notebooks, add or remove students and teachers, distribute sections and pages, review student work, and manage resources. It's a powerful tool for educational collaboration. Okay, that's pretty cool. I've just opened up this menu here for distribute page. What are the options here? I'm not quite sure about them. The distribute page menu in OneNote allows you to share pages with students or distribute them to different sections or groups. Options typically include distributing to all students, individual students, or specific sections in a class notebook. Okay, hey, that's really helpful. Okay, now I'm going to actually go and I want to get some tutoring help on some math. So, Copilot, will you be able to help give me some math tutoring and coaching in OneNote? Absolutely. I'd love to help with your math tutoring in OneNote. Just let me know what topics or problems you need assistance with. Okay. And we can... I'm going to go, I'm going to set some grid lines on the page, and then I'm going to go to the draw menu because, well, you know, OneNote does support digital inking, and I'm going to switch over here to the black pen, and I'm going to go, I'm going to draw a little bit of a graph, so give me just a second here. We can go to shapes, and I'll click on lines, and I'm going to drag this down like this, and then I'm going to drag and create another shape, drag it across like this. And then I'm gonna make some little hash marks on the page. Okay, hold on. There's some hash marks there. And then we just draw them there. And then I got them there. Now I'm gonna make a little red point right about here. And can you tell me what are the coordinates that you see on that red dot on the screen? The red dot is at the coordinates four, zero. Great. I will write that down. It is at four, zero. There we go. Four comma zero. Okay. Now I'm going to create a new page 
and I'd like some help on a triangle. I'm trying to figure out the Pythagorean theorem. Could you help me out with that? Absolutely. Give me a second. I'm just going to create a right triangle and I'm going to put some numbers on it and I'd like your assistance. So just give me a second here and I'm going to draw a triangle. There we go. And this is a right triangle. So get that going there. This side here is four and the bottom one is three. And so can you help coach me through how can I figure out the hypotenuse of this right triangle? Sure thing. With a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the two legs and c is the hypotenuse. You're given a equals 3 and b equals 4. Now square both a and b, add those results together, and then find the square root of that sum to find c. Let's work through it together. Okay, so... 3 squared is 9, so a squared, so that's 9, plus b squared, so 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 equals c squared, so that's 25 equals c squared. Um, now, I'm not quite sure what to do next. No worries. You're almost there. To find c, take the square root of 25. Give it a try. Okay, let's see. The square root of 25, that would equal 5. So square root of c squared is c. Square root of 25 is 5. So it looks like c equals 5. That's correct. c equals 5. Well done figuring out the hypotenuse. Can you give me another problem? I want to practice something similar. Is there a different type of triangle that you could help me out with? Sure. Let's try an isosceles triangle this time. Imagine a triangle where two sides are equal in length. If one of the equal sides is five units and the base is six units, can you find the height using the Pythagorean theorem? So each side is five, and then the base is six, so five, five, and six. So I could split that in half. Exactly. Split the base in half, creating two right triangles. Great. E Thanks, Copilot. You're welcome. Now, when I'm done, I have all of the transcript that I was working on. You can see all of the work that I was doing is captured in the transcript. So, Copilot keeps track of what it's doing when I'm using Copilot Vision. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.